Hey Warriors, welcome to my first video where we are going to review the reading in the close reader. Now, in my previous video, I said I was going to do two versions, one where I read and talked you through and one where I just go over everything. However, if I read from the text because of copyright issues, I have to make my channel private and I don't know how that's going to impact access issues um, and other features of YouTube that I really don't want to mess with right now. So there's only going to be one video and in this one video I'm going to go over the reading with you. So that means that I actually have to read it on your own. Oh, I know English teacher expecting you to read so crazy. However, if you have access to a laptop and you can go to my HRW um, that's the link in your dashboard and you sign in just like you would sign into Google you sign in with that um, my HRW which is in your dashboard again you actually can get to the online version of the book um, and it's uh, and you can have it read it to you so that is an option that you can um, follow up if, if you want and if you have that level of tech savvy which I know you do um, then you can you can do that or maybe you could have an adult in the house help you out or an older brother or sister help you out um, I'm going to give you as much guidance as I can before you read and lots of guidance after you read too so if you're really getting stuck or you're really confused don't worry because we're going to talk about it once you're done with the reading and so hopefully it will make a lot more sense and we're going to do this in like nice little chunks too so it won't be all at one time and I want you to just we're, we're gonna work through this day by day I don't want you to feel like you have to sit down and read the whole thing right now because you don't in fact what I want you to do in a few just in a minute is pause the video and then you're gonna read from the beginning of the story and stop on page 105 after you've read the first paragraph there's a second paragraph on page 105 but just hold off we'll do that with the with the second chunk sorry my computer made a weird noise We'll do that with the um, second uh, with the second video. Okay, so just from the beginning of the story, which starts on page, uh, hold on, hold on, scrolling back, scrolling back, um, page 102 to page 105, just reading that very first paragraph. So um, before you get started reading, let me just say a couple of things. There are a lot of place names and people names and names of creatures and gods and goddesses that you might like in your mind not know how to pronounce and that's okay we don't have to pronounce every single word in our head as we read it so if don't don't get hung up on pronunciation if there's a word you're not sure how to pronounce try sounding it out pick something that kind of sounds right if you need that that voice in your head to be going um just pick out that's what i do if I come across a name uh, and a, or a word and I'm not exactly sure how to pronounce it, I just kind of come up with a pronunciation that I think is about right, and that's just what I use in my in the little voice in my head. Um, the other thing I want to say is that the language in this is it's a little old fashioned. So again, don't get too hung up on that. Just think about the story elements that we've discussed uh, since the beginning of the year. Who's the main character? We already know that's going to be our hero, Perseus. Um, what is Perseus's problem going to be? I think that's going to become very obvious to you from this very first reading. Um, and uh, there is one word I want to start out talking about, though, that is an oracle. So right at the very beginning of the story, we kind of get a little bit of backstory about Perseus's birth. And it has to do with a prophecy from an oracle. And an oracle was a person uh, in the ancient world that, that gave predictions about what was going to happen in the future. And often kings would consult these oracles when they wanted to um, make a decision or understand something that was happening. So uh, they mentioned an oracle in the beginning. I just want you to understand what that, uh, what that meant. Um, so some things to look for in uh, as you're reading. Look for some of the traits of the gods. Of course, look for what is Perseus's problem. That's a big central um, idea. Um, and follow the directions that are in the workbook. It gives you some guidance, some things to underline, some things to note in the margins. So just kind of follow that along and come back after you've read it. So right now, pause the video.
no, no, I'm serious. Pause the video. Like, pause the video right now and go read. I'm going to be right here when you get back. Don't worry. Okay. Art to red, right? Okay, cool. <laughs> um, so that was at no time for me. You did that really quick. Uh, so let's talk about this first section um, to where we get to the blue box that is on the bottom of page 103. So in that first section, again, we find out that the king, um, and I have to look at the, the name to be able to pronounce it right, Acrisios, King Acrisios of Argos has a daughter named Danae, but he really wants a son because, you know, kings, they want sons to be able to carry on their, their dynasty, but he only has this daughter. So he goes to the oracle to find out if he'll have a son, but the oracle gives him this dire prediction that he will have a grandchild that will come back and kill him. And so to prevent this from happening, he locks Danae away in a chamber with people just bring her food and water and there's just one little opening for uh, sunlight to come in uh, and Zeus visits her. Now in a lot of Greek myths that you read, Zeus, how do I want to say this, uh, he liked the ladies. Um, he is always chasing after nymphs and goddesses and human women. His wife doesn't like this very much so it causes a lot of problems. Um, but in this case, he sort of feels bad for Danae, and he visits her, and lo and behold, a little while later, she has a baby. So now we learn something very key about Perseus, that he is, in fact, the son of Zeus, which was a common trait, or a common um, trait, I guess is the right word, for different heroes, that they would have some kind of divine parentage, whether it was Zeus or Poseidon, or one of the other gods, but in this case, um, Perseus is the son of Zeus. And here goes my computer again. Uh, so, um, what happens to Danae? Uh, her father, you know, sees that she's had this child, he's enraged, but instead of killing her and the child outright, he puts them in a box and throws them out in the ocean, like you do. Um, but the gods, again, kind of take pity on her and they carry it safely to this other island. Um, where we meet some other characters, and particularly the king, um, Polydectes. Um, the king of that island, Polydectes, kind of decides like, hey, Danae, she's kind of hot, right? And I want her to be my wife. Uh, but um, she's not really interested. And so to put him off, she just showers all this attention on Perseus. Like, I'm too much of a doting mom to pay any attention to you. And so Polydectes realizes that in order to have Danae as his wife, he's gonna to have to get rid of, of Perseus. So now we get down to um, the second, or now we get down to the blue box on the bottom of page 103. And it asks us um, in what ways are the gods similar to humans? and what superhuman powers do they have? So one of the interesting characteristics, I think, of Greek mythology is that the gods have a lot of the same traits as human beings. So they get angry, they get jealous, they fight and squabble. And in this case, we see Zeus taking pity on Danae. But in the same regard, he has this superhuman godlike ability to transform himself into a shower of gold and, and get in through the, the little hole in her chamber and be able to visit her as the shower of gold. So even though in some respect they have all these same traits as um, of human beings, at least personality-wise, they also have all of these superhuman powers. All right, so then we can start reading on the second um, the second section starting at the top, page 104. Um, and here's where you really start to see the conflict emerge because now we know Polydectes has this uh, motive for wanting to get rid of Perseus. And he can't just do it outright because then he would really look like a jerk. So he has to set a trap for Perseus. And so the trap that he sets is that um, he, he kind of uh, guilts Perseus a little bit into saying like, everyone's bringing me these gifts uh, for my wedding wedding to this other um, bride um, 
and you're not, you owe me everything. Like I took you in when you didn't have a home and now you don't uh, respond to me. And Perseus thinks this is unfair because you know, it is. And he says that, um, he said that, what? well, I can't give you anything. I don't have anything to give you, but ask me to do anything for you and, and I will do it. And that's exactly what Polydectes thought would happen is exactly what he wanted to happen. And so he gives Perseus this impossible task to bring him the head of Medusa. This happens a lot in these hero stories. They have conflict with the king uh, where this person in power gives them this sort of impossible task to complete. And so the hero's journey becomes about how does he go about um, completing this impossible task. And of course, it's never straightforward. There's always all of these steps involved. And so we see these different steps um, being involved where first off, Perseus knows that he's been that he's been had at this point once he understands he knew who Medusa was but he had no idea how he would find her or how he would kill her or anything and he knew it was like this impossible task so he knew he had been tricked um, but his heroic and noble um, you know bearing doesn't allow him to back down or to run away he's going to face this task even though he knows it's impossible but he's caught in this predicament, and so he prays to the goddess Athena. And Athena um, hears his prayer, and because he is this great hero, and would really be a half-sibling to him, because Athena is also the daughter of Zeus, uh, she offers him some help. Uh, and here's where we get to the part of the story where he's offered magical items. And again, this often happens in myths. And in fact, it's a concept that gets carried over into fairy tales later on. Oftentimes in the fairy tales that we know, Cinderella, um, the, 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 the main character is, for instance, Cinderella, the main character is gifted some type of magical item or magical items that help them with what they, with their task that they need to accomplish or to solve their problem or whatever. So uh, Perseus is offered a set of different magical equipment that uh, will help him. So the first thing, um, the first thing he's offered is a hat of dirt. Uh, which actually just, it makes him invisible. That's what the hat does. Um, winged sandals, which sounds kind of strange, but they were these magical sandals that belonged to the god Hermes. And it allowed him, he was the messenger of the gods, and it allowed him to travel all over um, very quickly. So these winged sandals will help Perseus to travel to all of these places that he has to go. And then a knapsack to hold the Gorgon's head. Uh, then additionally, she offers a shield and a sword. Um, the, sh the sword is special because it's made of this uh, strong stone that won't be um, destroyed. That, that's the only thing that can kill the Gorgon, like that won't like um, kind of dissolve as soon as, as it's plunged into the Gorgon. Um, and then this shield with a shiny interior, like it's like a mirror. And so he can hold the shield up and see the reflection of Medusa without actually looking at Medusa because we know if we look at Medusa, then we get turned to stone. So, um, so it's his way, his workaround from that um, power that she has. All right, so um, he knows he has uh, Athena on his side and he knows that his first step is to go and visit these three sisters. And that's the last paragraph that we read um, that uh, he has to go see the sisters for uh, for CDs, the for CDs. There are these three sisters, and this is a kind of fun one to imagine. They, there are three of them, and they only have one eye and one tooth for all three of them. And they have to share the eye, and they have to share the tooth. So I'm not exactly sure of the mechanics of all that, but it's a fun thing to imagine. And Perseus, knowing this, tricks them, uh, puts his hand up next to their hand and gets the eye and takes it. So without their eye, they're blinded, they're helpless. Uh, and so it, it forces them to help him along um, on, his, on his hero's journey. 
Uh, the question down in the blue box asks you, um, what is heroic about Perseus? So what kind of heroic traits have we already seen from Perseus? One of the big ones that I would point out to you is asking the gods for help. So let's contrast that for a moment with our character Arachne. Arachne mocked the gods, right? She claimed that her abilities were just from herself, not from anything that the gods did, and she was even better than the gods. She had this pride and arrogance in front of the gods, and she was punished for it. In the same way, Perseus is humble before the gods. He asks for their help. He knows that he's facing this impossible task and that he needs the gods' help. And so the gods respond. So that is one um, trait. Again, when we talk about these heroic tales being models for how average everyday citizens in ancient Greek should behave, one of the things was to be humble before the gods and to ask for the help of the gods. So that's an important message and that's part of Perseus's heroic journey. Another part is that um, even though he knows that he was tricked, he stands by his word. Uh, he, he knows Polydictus set a trap for him and that he walked right into it. And, you know, maybe some people would be inclined to go, hey, you know, that's impossible. I can't do that. You're trying to trick me. I'm not going to do it. But because of Perseus's heroic nature, he uh, will continue on and he will, he said he would do it. He said he would bring uh, Polydectus anything he asked for or do whatever he asked. And so he stands by his word. Again, a model for proper behavior, a, a model for moral behavior. Do what you say you're going to do. Um, and so that's the ways that we see uh, Percy is acting in sort of like the ideal Greek heroic way. All right, that was our reading for today. That wasn't so bad. <laughs> um, I think we did a really good job. And next time I'll make sure to mute my computer so it's not making crazy noises while we're trying to talk. But um, just checking my notes. We went over everything I wanted to talk about. Let me say, uh, first off, if you have any questions, Please post them in the comments, um, either on YouTube or on Google Classroom. And then tomorrow morning, I'll make a short video just addressing everybody's questions um, before we, and I'll post that before we move on to the second reading tomorrow. Now, if you don't have time to do this tomorrow, don't worry. That's the whole idea of me doing these videos is you can do them at your own pace when you are ready to do them. So if you wanna do it Saturday or Sunday or Monday, that's okay. The video will be there for when you um, for when you want to to work on this. So if you have some other things uh, that you're doing, even if they're if just reading or maybe just some hobbies and crafts to keep you busy and keep your mind off of all the stuff that's going on right now, please do it. Um, I'm just putting these up for fun for me, um, uh, for you. Um, just a way that we can connect and and hang out and be together and maybe get some reading done and. And honestly, just to talk about something I find interesting, which is mythology. So um, just take your time, um, but please send me some questions. And if you're watching this later on, so it is, um, it's 1.36 on March. Oh my goodness, what is the date? 20, wait, I gotta grab my phone. Hold on, I'll be right back, don't go away. How sad that I don't even know the date anymore. Um, it's March 26th. Um, so it's Thursday, March 26th. I'm going to post this today. If you get to some questions, uh, if you get to this later and you have questions, of course, email me, hit me up on Google Classroom, hit me up on YouTube. I'll be here. I don't have anything better to do. And besides, what's more important than reaching out to my students? All right, Warriors, have a good day. Um, remember to, wait, I got to do it the right way like and subscribe and ring the bell so you get notifications when I post a new video. Um, please give me some feedback. Let me know what you think. Let me know if you're having fun. Uh, and definitely let me know what you're up to. Miss you guys. See you soon. Bye.